Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Garden located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today we're taking a field trip to see some winter rye that's on my farm in the corner of my farm. It's doing extremely well. Uh, it's about 40 degrees right now. Today is Friday, May 14th, 2021. And I planted this last, let me think, beginning of September of last year I planted this up. And it has really taken off. We've had a cool, wet spring. Winter rye loves it. All those roots are going down deep into the soil. And this beautiful field here is doing amazing. There's a couple things growing in there like dock. So let's take a closer look at that. So here we have a nice, healthy sample of dock growing in my winter rye. Am I worried about it? Absolutely not. And it's gonna go to seed soon. Dock is like a daikon radish. It's getting down there, breaking up that hard pan clay soil and allowing the other roots of the winter rye to go down even deeper because it's going to trace next to that. Now, when I come in here and cut this winter rye down in probably another month, month and a half, I'm not decided how long it's going to be. The seeds heads are forming already right now, so it might be in a month, it might be a month and a half, all depends on the weather. But this is all going to be available free straw. Here we have a beautiful bird species sitting there, and that's on top of some dock also, on the, also on the corner of my farm here, and they love those seeds. And now I'm talking too loud, so it flew away. So we're looking at here is those beautiful seed heads forming on the winter rye. They will go through an anthesis stage, which means when it's a little, let's say yellow pollen starts coming out from each seed, and then it can get germinated. And then after they get germinated and I cut it down, those actually seeds will start growing again this year, and they will produce and go through the following year. So it's a nice thing, and you don't have to, if you can wait until they, the seeds form, and when you cut it down, down, they'll just go right to the ground they'll germinate in the soil and start coming back up again and then they'll just give you a kind of a nice little green grass it won't grow too tall uh, less than say um, I don't know about eight inches probably through the whole summer and then in the fall we'll get a little bit taller and then stay green all winter I just want to give you a nice overview of the whole field of winter rye like I said, I'm so proud of this. It's doing extremely well. Lots of free hay. I don't know what I'm gonna be planting into this yet, like I've mentioned before. It all depends on how the economy is going. Right now, we're having a gasoline crisis because of the pipeline that's shut down and everybody's hoarding gasoline, but that's gonna change in the future, hopefully, and get back to normal. Thank goodness my tractor is diesel. There's plenty of diesel around, but things are going well. I moved over to another field, and this is winter rye also too. I planted this later. This is probably planted around the end of October. And we can see here, I have leaves in front of me that's pretty wide, at least like 10 feet wide, full leaves that I got delivered from the township last year. And like I said, it's about 10 feet wide and about maybe uh, eight to 10 inches tall. And also on the other side, I have leaves also too. My plan is, and I have never done this before, is to grow a living root in the ground over winter, and then the leaves I can bring closer and kill this off after I cut it down maybe. I'm not this, uh, sure what, what I'd like to do yet, but I'd like to plant watermelon here. So the watermelon will grow inside the living root area, the winter rye that's been feeding the soil all summer, and then the vines can go out on both sides of the, let's say, leaves here and then I can see the watermelons and also I've been retaining water all winter long underneath the leaves and inside growing the soil. So it's also a huge benefit to try it this way. Now see what's going on. What's growing in front of me here, this is actually sunflowers I had in the field over here on the right hand side and I let them go to seed so I can feed the birds in the winter time and they have taken off and we're gonna take a closer look. I'm curious, and this is where I get my incentive from all the time. I just keep following nature's rules. This here is a nice clump of sunflowers. They're healthy, they're green. Oh, I wanna ask you this question, and I'm always, uh, it's, let's, let's play a call uh, Garden Jeopardy. The question for, 500, for uh, lots of money, I can't send it to you, but what kind of nitrogen is available nitrogen 
in our soil. There's only one type. There's actually four, I think three or four different types of nitrogen. But what's the nitrogen that's available to the plant? What's it called? And if you know the symbol, great. Please leave me in the comments below because that's what we're going to be talking about in the future. There's only one available nitrogen that plants need and and that soil food webs, the microbes, it delivers it to our plants. And like I says, they are green and healthy. And these are growing pretty much, we'll find out if it's just leaf mold or maybe they're growing down into the soil, but they're beautiful and they're healthy. So let's look into that. But again, different trial this year, looking forward to it because I believe this summer is gonna be hot. I don't have irrigation out here. I don't uh, irrigate pretty much any of my crop. I water my garden for my own food, but I rely on just building soil to hold that moisture all summer long for those plants that go into it. See how nice and green this winter rye is doing? I've used no fertilizer on my farm except leaf mold and worm castings. Now, it's doing amazingly great this winter rye. And you can see how lush it is and how healthy it is. Now, that tells me that soil is ready to go. If I want to plant cantaloupes there, watermelon, anything in there, or butternut squash or spaghetti squash, I think that's a vine that's going to, let's say, trellis out from that area. Now, this was planted later. I'm going to show you a row that I planted earlier in the same kind of situation in the same field, and that's what is going to tell me something different. Just moved over, let's say 50 feet. There's a couple other rows here, but I want to show you this row. And this is your, let's say, a soil test that you do by just growing winter rye. Now you saw that lush part over here, and now you can see there's something totally different. So this area is not as good and as healthy as the other one I was showing you. And you can tell by, let's say, all this light green color here shorter in the middle a little bit better on the sides because maybe the leaves are leaching some nitrogen into that but this is not as healthy now can i still plant here of course i can the only thing i have to do is when i plant some seeds in the ground just take a handful of let's say worm castings and plant them in that area that i'm planting let's say three seeds of watermelon or two seeds of watermelon in a mound and after i cut this down and it's all going to be fine and once i bring those leaves back over that will give me more let's say nitrogen and cooling effect of the soil so it won't be so hot and then again the watermelons can go out both ways on both sides here now I'm going to grow seedless watermelons and in seedless watermelons you have to plant the seedless type but also you have to plant the pollinator next to it the pollinator will pollinate the seedless watermelons but the, the, the variety will not produce seeds and it's not say not going to produce seeds it's not going to produce a lot of seeds there is some there and that's where we get our seeds from but awesome now we're going to take a look at this side over here and you can see how quickly it changes from this row here on your left to the one on your right. Again, back to some nice lush foliage, ready to plant something into it after I cut it down or terminate it. And just, we were just looking at this row, again on our left hand side, and you can see the difference between, let's say, 10 or 15 feet difference, right back to being great once again growing that soil all winter long and just amazing the height of your winter rye is always going to be dependent on when you planted it the earlier you plant it most likely the taller it's going to get you plant the late in the season it might reach to that stage but probably going to be a little bit on the shorter side so here we have a nice beautiful sample of sunflowers here growing in our leaf mold let me push this out of the way. Here's a great example. I believe this is a single stem variety. Some of these are multiple stems in here. But let's dig into here and find out how the roots are doing. Now, with this, you can see this is my leaf mold already. And this has been only applied here last, say, October, November of last year. So let's get to this one sunflower. Now, it's not, it's growing in a little bit in the leaf mold and it's probably gone down a little bit further. And that is, that's it. That's a simple little root system, but growing extremely well. That tiny little root system probably went down a little bit further and I broke off a lot of roots. 
but you can see here that it's not much but again it's all that moisture and nice warm temperatures to grow this beautiful sunflower and again it's doing me a favor by growing in there now this other spot here let's see if I can just see got a clump see again nice through system going into my leaf mold aerating them just think of this as the same thing that's happening that I showed you in the other video of my raised bed have how all those roots are going in here I'm gonna let these grow on their own and these are going to die off but it's going to give me some green material to my browns and again these sunflowers are feeding the microbes in the leaf mold because it's sending down that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere making it to exudates and moving them down further here and if i want to but i don't want to disturb this too much i'm sure there's plenty of worms in here too doing an amazing job of making worm poo and the microbes are eating each other and giving out plant available nutrients. And you can see, not lacking at all in nitrogen or anything else too. Super healthy. So we'll do that. Maybe what I might do also too is leave that winter rye to grow. And what I should try to do early, and I will do an experiment on it, I want to plant directly into the leaf mold um, some watermelon, and then all those roots can go out just like this and pick up all that moisture over the summertime. I want to thank you so very much for watching today's video. It's a pleasure to see you again and thank you all for all the comments and uh, helping my channel out and again following nature's rules and just understanding them I enjoy sharing them with you again just a farmer just a farmer learning stuff from nature paying attention listening to you and listening to my soil. So from this nerd farmer to you, happy gardening and love what's going on in the world. Enjoy. Bye.